I'd like to welcome you to our messages and to bring to you the truth of the Bible, what God has to say in the King James Bible. As you come forward to hear this message today about God is angry, I've got to tell you something. I'm sorry, but I did not prepare a message. I have nothing for you. You come to hear this message and there's nothing for you. Now let's bow our heads and close in prayer. We turn off the video and go home. Now wouldn't that make you mad if you went to a church and the pastor from the pulpit started and concluded a service like that? Now I'll ask you to open your Bibles in Matthew 25 and we're going to talk about a God that is angry, or God is angry. My talent is for preaching and teaching. And some of you would be angry if I did not use that talent. Especially if I was standing in your pulpit in your church. I had made that announcement. Imagine how your pastor would feel. You're telling people, uh, this guest preacher, this guest evangelist is going to come. He's going to preach a good message. He's, he's uplifting. And I get up and tell you exactly what I just told you a few minutes ago. Matthew 25, verse 14. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling to a far country, who called his own servants... And delivered unto them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one. To every man according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. Then he that had received the five talents went, and traded this, the same, and made them other five talents. And likewise, he that had received two talents, he also gained other two. These two guys have a hundred percent return of what was given to them. And notice the word talent. And I'm not going to use the word talent as in money. I'm going to use it as in talents that God gives us. Ability to preach, ability to teach, ability to read, ability to pray, ability to do a musical instrument, ability to sing, the ability to whatever God has given ability to you. But he that had received one went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. After a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them judgment. So he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained besides them five talents more. Again, 100%. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Now if that is not your goal to hear the Lord Jesus Christ tell you, at the judgment seat of Christ, you need to set your priorities straight and get them right. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things, even though into, enter thou into the joy of the Lord. He also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. But behold, I have gained two other talents besides them. Again, 100%, even though he didn't get five, he only got two. With what God has given him, he has multiplied to 100%. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. Again, if, that's, if we were to hear the judgment seat of Christ. Then he which received the one talent 
came and said, Lord, I know thee that thou art a hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown, and gathereth where thou hast not strawed, casting the blame upon God. He's blaming God. Oh, I was born into this, and I was born into that, and because of my color, because of who I am, I couldn't do it. And I was afraid. Eh? You'd be afraid too. You're going to be afraid when you don't cast your talents in. And went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there thou hast that design. Zero percent. You say, well, he had the one talent. That wasn't his. That was, that was the, that was the, uh, that was the, that's God. That was God's talent. That wasn't his. His Lord answered and said, Thou wicked and slothful servant. It means you don't do nothing. Thou knowest that I reap where I sow not and gather where I have not strawed. Thou oughtest therefore to put my money to the exchangers, and then at my coming I should have received my own with usury. The Lord was angry with the servant that had a talent and did not use them. Now let me say for today, the Lord is angry at servants that have talents and do not use them. I don't have any talents, you, you may say. Everyone that is saved Poor, wretched, rich, blind, dead, well not dead, deaf, not dead, but deaf, hospital bound, can pray. Prayer is a talent anybody can do. Even the lost people pray, so you are without excuse. Whether God gave you five, two, or one, how many that God has given you, you are responsible and nobody else. And there are people out there who've taken the talents that God has given them for His grace, for His will, and they've given it over to the world. They buried it in the earth. And it comes back as no profit to the Lord. He buried it in the earth. There's a black singer. If I were to give her name, you know her. She was born and raised in a Baptist church. She gave her heart to Jesus. She gave her talent to the world. And ended up dead in a bathtub. Let me know who I'm talking about. Some of you don't. But God knows. When we talk about these talents, we're talking about a serious thing. Even if you're not saved, you have not trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior. The talents that you have are God-giving, and you're going to give an account, and we're going to look at that right now. In this study, Romans chapter 14, verse 12. Romans 14, 12. Romans 14, 12, the Bible states, King James, So then, every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. Now, people will go out there, judge not, least ye be judged. Everyone is going to be judged one day. You, Christian, listening to this video, listen to me. We'll give an account of yourself in that day called the judgment seat of Christ. Now, did you just hear me? 
you can thank Stanley Hayward and the Holy Spirit that you are now without excuse. You cannot say to God now, I never knew. Because I just told you. I just read to you the verse. And everybody I said has a talent, and you need to find out what your talents are, and you now need to give them to God, because if you don't, my words of Romans 14, 12, when I just said, gave you no excuse to stand before Jesus Christ and say, I never knew. As some of you were angry because I had nothing prepared, so will God be angry with you when you show up at that judgment seat of Christ unprepared. Imagine going to the auto place where your car is, thinking in your head that the car is fixed and it's time. You go down, you got your credit card, you got the cash or the check ready, you're ready to pick up your car, you go up to the desk, and the guy says it's going to be another two days. Now, don't get pious with me. You're going to get angry. If not, something somewhere will get you angry. If not, that illustration. But yet, when you show up in the judgment seat of Christ, guess what? If you're unprepared, God will be angry. As we saw in Matthew 25. Now, where are we going with this? We are going to talk about the judgment seat of Christ and the talents. And we're going to go in both avenues. Now, let's go the talent route, the talent highway. In Webster's 1828 Dictionary, Definition number one is among the ancients a weight and a coin. It's a money unit. Like our dollars, pennies, nickels. Definition four, important abilities, superior understanding, as he is a man of the talents. God has given every Christian a coin. It must be abilities you cannot hold it out and say this is the coin that God's given us God has not given us a coin he has given us abilities verse number uh, not verse number but definition number four your excuse is I cannot play an instrument I cannot talk to people I cannot, I cannot, I cannot. I'm going to tell you what you can give to God in talent for everybody. No exceptions. If you do not have a problem, it's between you and God. If you do have a problem, it's between you and God. Those who don't have a problem are those who are doing what God wants them to do. And those who do have a problem, you're not doing what God wants you to do. Now, what we're going to look at is we're going to look at the talents, not special talents. I'm not going to talk about someone who can play a trumpet. I love the trumpet. That's a special talent. What I'm going to talk about talents here are talents that are for everyone, without excuse. In other words, what I'm going to tell you today, you will be without excuse unless you turn me off. I am talking to every Christian that is born again, that is a newborn babe in Christ, to the elder, the aged. What I'm going to tell you is what is expected by all Christians, by God. And if you don't like it, turn me off right now. But I've already told you, you're without excuse. 1 Thessalonians 5.17 
Now what's great about these, these tapes and these videos is you can listen at your own time. Write it down if you can't keep up. 1 Thessalonians 5.17 Here's a good memory verse. Pray without ceasing. Let's run to 1 Timothy 2.8. 1 Timothy 2.8. This is not the first one. This is the first one that every Christian can do. 1 Timothy 2.8. I will therefore that men pray everywhere. Well, my school doesn't want me to pray. My employer doesn't want me to pray. I'll show you how you pray at school over a meal, okay? Are you ready? I'm showing you, now watch. Now, who did I offend? I didn't have a meal, but I prayed, Lord, to bless the meal that was in front of me. You got a big job coming up. You're at the computer. It needs to be done. I'll show you how to pray for it, even if your employee doesn't allow you to pray. Ready? I just prayed. Oh, you want to be. Oh, I know what you want. Lord God the Father, set down fire. Why did I get fired? Because you were a jerk. <laughs> That's why you got fired. Finish the verse. Lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. Without wrath. Listen, if you're at the job place and they don't want you to pray your holy hands out loud, don't do it out loud. Don't do it with your hands in the air. Don't do it with wrath. And then again, don't pray. Lord, will you strike fire down that guy over there? Don't do that either. Two commands. Very first thing. Listen, I already told you. Even the heathen, even those that are not saved will pray. How come you can't? The two commands is prayer the subject. Always do it. Now that does not mean 60 seconds every hour or 60 minutes every hour. Whenever you get the ability to pray and the Holy Spirit calls you to pray, pray. And do it everywhere. Yeah, I know the laws of America. But I've already showed you two ways to pray and without accepting people. All right? A blind man can pray. A deaf man can pray. A stupid person can pray. Rich or poor can pray. Your first talent is to pray. How faithful are you in that talent? When it comes to prayer, what will the Lord say to you? Well done, thou good and faithful servant, or will he be angry with you? Paul says God expects you to pray always and everywhere. Oh, you can go run to man, but why not go run to God? Go run to the doctor, but don't forget first to pray to God. God expects you to pray. Did you see in Matthew 25 what the Lord said to the servant with one talent that he did not use? Thou wicked and slothful servant. If you lack prayer, you are wicked and you're slothful. Number two, 1 Thessalonians 5.16. 1 Thessalonians 5.16. Rejoice evermore. Now, I know we went out of order. We just looked at verse 17. 
Now we're in verse 16. This verse has two words like Jesus wept. You want verses to memorize? You want verses to make God happy? You want verses to apply to your life? 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16. Then 1 Thessalonians 5, 17. Now we're going to run back to Webster's 18.28. What is rejoice? To experience joy and gladness in a high degree with lively and pleasurable sensations to exult. Have you ever just been so wrong, wonderfully under joy being a Christian? Does God excite you more than a sports team? More than a sale? Does God bring more joy into your life or do material things? Again, like that guy that took the talent and hid it in the earth, is your talent of rejoicing and joy, is it in earthly, worldly things? Or is it in God? Have you ever shouted amen in a, in a service with a preaching? Or have you ever shouted, go team, go! Where is your joy? Are you joy in the message in the Lord? Or are you joy at the end of the message? Now I've been in some messages where it was a joyful that the message ended. Because it's falling on dead ground and on perverse and all that other junk. But where the messages of God, where the Holy Spirit is working, are you joyful in that message or what? What is your joy? God expects you to experience joy and gladness in the highest degree. That's another talent. That's two talents. That's one more than that slothful and wicked servant. There is plenty to be rejoicing. You're not going to hell. You're a child of God. You are sealed by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is inside you. There's plenty to rejoice about. When you get to lacking joy, start counting your blessings and name them one by one. Number three. Number three. First Thessalonians 5.21. Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. Now that's a hard one. What is this talent? This talent here, number three, makes you holy. God said, be ye holy, for I am holy. God wants you to be godlike, not worldly. Are drums holy? Have you looked at what drums are for? Have you looked up where drums come from? Have you looked up where drums have been used? And you will find out they are anything but holy. Rock for Jesus. Rock comes from rock and roll. We're Christian rock. Okay? You know what the rock means? You know what rock and roll means? Let me read it to you. Rock and roll, a noun. In this case, a verb. First used in 1951 by Alan Freed, F-R-E-E-D, a Cleveland disc jockey, taken from the song, My Baby Rocks Me with a Steady Roll. My Baby Rocks Me with a Steady Roll. This use of rock, roll, rock, and roll, etc., with a reference to sexual intercourse, is traditional in blues, a form of popular music that evolved in the 1950s from rhythm and blues. And how can you get rhythm and blues into Christianity? 
characterized by the use of electric guitars, rhythm with an accent on the offbeat, and youth oriented lyrics. So if that is where rock and roll was originated, where do you get rock for Jesus? You say, why are you picking on rock music? I am proving all things and holding fast that which is good. I do not support rock and roll music for Jesus because the foundation is not good. It is not righteous and there's no way it can be. That would be like having uh, a whorehouse church. On Sundays we're sacred, and the rest of the days we live in the flesh. And that's what the church is today. It's a whorehouse religion. On Sunday we're holy, and the rest of the day we sell ourselves out to Satan and the world. Most of your colored women singers in the world of radio come from Baptist churches. Did you know that? My jury and are saved too. But they've given their talents to Satan. You are to take your God-given talents and prove them to be good. Just because a church says it's good doesn't mean it's holy. Now let me tell you something first of all. This outline was done maybe five to seven years ago. I found a whole packet of, of outlines I've done. I'm going to use them. I'm going to give them to you. God gives me the ability to preach out of the pulpit. If one of them's good, if you use it. I've never used these outlines before. I've found them. And these outlines are just as harsh today as when they were first done. Just because a church says it's good. There's a church out there that says if you go to Mary. There's a church out there that semi says if you have multiple wives. And there's a church out there that says if you go sell magazines. There was a guy one time who said, if you drink Kool-Aid, you're going to go to heaven. Don't believe just because a church or a pastor or some idiot says it, it's right. What did the verse say? Prove all things. You prove it by the King James 1611 Bible. Hold fast that which is good. If the Bible says it's good, you hold fast to it. If it's not good, you get rid of it. And look at look at this. Check this out. This is June 27, 2013. This message was done five or six years ago. Yesterday, the Supreme Court ruled that sodomites can get married. Look, look at this. If God is not in this message, listen, I just saw the title. I swear to God, give me a Bible. I did not read through this message. So help me God. By the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm saved. I have not read through this message. The Supreme Court of this land has many made many rulings. And most have been violation of scripture and or our constitution. The Supreme Court yesterday violated the scriptures. So how do you prove things? You must be the judge. Judge not, least you be judged. So what is the third talent? The third talent is proper judgment. Imagine an idiot telling you, Judge not, least you be judged. And how many times did you go through a red light? When you look at that red, yellow, green light, you got to judge. What am I to do? When someone's about to smack you in the face, you got to judge. Do I just stand here and take it, or do I move my face away? I hope when you're going to find a spouse that you're going to judge that person to make sure that's going to be a proper spouse. But 1 Corinthians 2.15 The third talent is the talent of judgment. Every single born-again Christian has this talent. 
I'm going to read you the verse. Are you ready? Pick up your jaw off the ground, put it back in your face, and listen to me. And listen, I know this is weird preaching. I know this is hard. But you got to realize that some of your preachers out there, if you were pull their pants down, you see that they're wearing panties. And pink wants to be that. Read 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Not all preachers are of God. 1 Corinthians 2.15. Why do I preach like this? Because I'm preaching the truth. But he that is spiritual. I'm spiritual. I'm born again. April 21st, 1987. I received the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior. I have read this Bible. I have read the Schofield Bible. Let me get it. I'm, I don't want to lie to you. I have read the Schofield Bible all the way through since 2001. I read three chapters at least, try to every day of the New Testament. I read every day a chapter of Proverbs matching the date. I read every day a chapter in order the book of Psalms. I have studied the book that are in front of me. I am presently studying for school the book of Nehemiah. I have studied most of the books of the Bible. I still got a lot more to go. I have a right to judge because it says, but he that is spiritual judges all things. Yet he, he himself is judging no man. Now it says things and not people. I can't judge people. Now if I look at Tom, I can't judge Tom. But if I see Tom is not doing anything what the scripture says to do, I can call and question his salvation. Because James says with faith cometh works. Works is not a salvation. But if I see that Tom is not doing anything for the Lord Jesus Christ, he's not showing love towards Jesus as Jesus showed him love, then I can look at Tom and say, hey, I really question your salvation. Salvation is not a thing. I mean, salvation is a thing. Excuse me. I, it's not the person. Now, I don't have the right to tell, to say, Tom, you're going to hell, you're going to heaven. I don't have that ability. I can look at the things that Tom does. And there are a lot of people out there who profess to be Christians and scripturally using the Bible. You ain't saved. You were never saved. You have been given a, a white lie. You have been gypped. Say, where do you get that from? The scriptures. Now, what is the proper talent? What is the proper talent? No, letter A. You smoke cigarettes, you'll burn in hell. B. You know, if you continue to smoke them things, your health is not going to be good. And it doesn't look good as a Christian to be smoking. What is the proper talent there? The talent is God giving you judging powers, ways, and what have you. The proper talent is to walk up to the person alone and say, you know, is that really, would Jesus do that? Would Jesus be pleased? If the rapture would, be, would happen right now, you think Jesus would be very happy to see you smoking a camel rather than riding one? Would you like to see Jesus and blow that smoke in his face? If Jesus were to come now and sit down with you, could you do that in front of him? 
And do you know what it's doing to your body? Listen, personally, I've had people in my life, when I smoke cigarettes, they go, oh, 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 oh. it's like, you know what I hear? Oh. You sound like Rocky. Oh. A talent is something that God's given you, judging powers, ways, what have you. Here, Paul says to judge things and not the people. You don't look at them because they're on the wrong side of the track. You don't look at them because of sex. You don't look at them because... Listen, a lot of people... You're anti-Catholic. No, I'm not. You have lied. Because most of my family were Catholic. I grew up Catholic. I am against the Catholic organization that calls themselves the church. I am against the priests, the nuns, the Pope, and all those hierarchies that teach the people wrong. But the person that is in the pew, that is the person I love. That's the person I want them to choose. Listen, we heard a letter last night from a testimony of a woman that I believe got saved. Who believed in the Lord Jesus Christ as her Savior. And in innocence went to her priest and told him what happened. And that damn priest told her to stay away from the Bible, stay away from the, those people, and stay in the church. I damn that priest, and I pray for that woman. Well, are you, well the, the priest is a man. No, that is a servant of Satan. He has been taught the wrong ways to teach people the other wrong ways. And then when you match with Scripture, Jesus said to the Pharisee, when you take one apostolate and you make him a twofold child of hell more than yourself, it'd be better, I think it's the uh, millstone, I forget what the rest of that verse is. So I can take what Jesus said and I can apply it to that man that has ruined this woman probably from a walk of Jesus Christ. She may be saved, but she may never walk in the footsteps of Christ as a true Christian because of that ass. And that's what that church teaches. Stay away from the Bible. I'm praying that woman will get in the Bible and she'll see the verses in there that don't match that priest and what that church is saying. You understand where I'm coming from? It's the church has defiled the woman. The woman is defiled, but she can get in the Word. I get into a Bible and read it and the Holy Spirit will pull her out of that mess. Number four is not only judgment, but is to abstain from all parents of evil. Now let me ask you a question. How about if I were to come, or you were to see me walking down the street with a brown bag taking drinks out of it? What would you think? But let me tell you, it's a Coca-Cola. It's a Coca-Cola inside that brown bag drink. But what does it make you think I'm doing? It's an appearance of drinking some kind of thing that's not Coca-Cola. It's drinking alcohol from a brown bag. It does not look good. So what does the Bible teach? You are not to drink from a brown bag. You say, that's stupid. Why would the Bible say that? Because it would make someone else think that you're doing something you're not supposed to. Number two. I need to use a pay phone. I got a dollar. I need change. There's two stores. The closest one is a package store. As a born-again Christian, should I walk in that package store to get 10 dimes for my dollar? Boy, you're old dimes. Okay, four quarters. I just showed my age. Would it be proper for me to walk in that package store, which is closer, and get my quarters? No. Absolutely not. Oh, you're harsh. No, I'm not. Abstain from all appearance of evil. What of a newborn babe in Christ that knows me saw me walking out of that package store? 
You didn't buy nothing. No, but I walked out of a package store. What does the Bible say about drinking? Wine's a marker. Strong drink is deceiving. Whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. And that Christian will look at me one day and read that verse. Well, he wasn't wise. He didn't belong there. Let me try another one. What well, if you were to see me walk into a restaurant alone with a known prostitute? Well, you were going to wait. No, you just see me walking a prostitute. I'm walking a prostitute. Walk into a restaurant with a woman that's known to be a prostitute alone. You're not judging the person. You look, ha ha ha, what he was going to do. It looks evil. What if I had, I don't have one with me right here, but I'll tell you like this. What if I had something white sticking out of my mouth? What do you think it looks like? You know, I believe that Christians should not even give their children those candy cigarettes. Wow, you're going, no! Abstain from all appearance of evil! If it looks bad, don't do it! I'll even go one, one step further. You're in a restaurant. You're a diabetic. You need an insulin shot. i tell you what I would do. People, I'm a diabetic. This is insulin. Because it looks like you're doing dope. Somebody would think you're doing dope. Some people think you are a dope. I have to say that. Brother, we are judging you, number three. Like I said, with the bottle in the brown bag, it looks like booze. And number two, it looks like whoremongering. Which two things the Bible is against. The talent is you're not to look like you're, you're sinning even when it's right. You can have a Coca-Cola, but if it looks like it's whiskey or vodka, don't do it. At work, if you take a paper clip and put it in your pocket, what does it look like? You know you're going too far. No, I'm not. It looks like you're going to steal it. Abstain from all appearance. Listen, your co-workers know you're a Christian. Ah, look at that. He took that and put it in his pocket. He's stealing. Talent is to keep your life clean. Talent is to keep your life looking clean. Even if you're doing something innocent, if it looks like it's not innocent, you need to change. I'm going to, I'm going to make one more, one more thing. I'm going to tell you before I say it, it, it annoys me. And it happens in most families. There's always a woman in the family that wants to put her... Now, there's nothing wrong with it. I don't personally like it. But there's always a woman who wants to hug everybody when you first greet them. As a Christian, if you're married, you have no bit... You are... No, I'm not going to hug you. I'm sorry. Because if somebody else sees you hugging, they may not know that's a family member. And they know you're married. Oh, look at that. He's hugging another woman. What did that look like? All right, we'll stop there. Proverbs six sixteen. Proverbs six sixteen. You're going to be judged for these things, by the way, whether you like them or not. I'm trying to help you out. I love you. I want you to do right. I want you to stand the judgment seat of Christ. I want you to hear. Well done. Now watch this. Proverbs 16, six, uh, Proverbs 6, 16. And, and these six things does the Lord hate. Yea, seven are an abomination unto him. God hates six things. Ready? A proud look. 
a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood, murder, a heart that devises wicked imaginations. All you do is you think about ways to do wickedness. Man, we're on Capitol Hill, Washington, D.C. right here. Feet that be swift in running to mischief. A woman in a Baptist church ready to talk about gossip. A false witness that speaketh lies. And he that soweth discord among the brethren. These six things that anger God. And do you think they will be hidden at the judgment seat of Christ? If unwashed? There's seven things. Six and one. Now I'm going to break these seven down real quick and we'll be done. God, this is, this is a talent. This is your attitude. God hates pride. He will be angry at the Christian for your pride of place, race, and position. Well, I'm at such and such church, and I have such and such position. And you, you know, well, what's one of those songs? I'm proud to be American. Made in the USA, which don't mean nothing today. The Chinese and the Japanese are proud in their heritage. Number two, gossip are lies. I'm going to give you some more lies. It says a lying tongue. Easter bunnies are lies. Santa Claus is a lie. A lie is a lie no matter what color you put it in. Next, number three. Murder is hateful in the eyes of God. If a man is adulterous thinking about lust of a woman, Matthew 28, for whosoever looketh upon a man, uh, look upon a woman that lusts after her in his heart, has already committed adultery with her. If God charges you adultery just by thinking about it, what do you think he's going to charge you when you think about killing somebody and you did not kill? Ask Joab and his three brothers. You don't need to be... Let me, let me, how can I rephrase this? You can be charged with murder without actually doing the physical crime. Let me say it that way. God will charge you with murder if you do not do it. But just by thinking about it. Wicked imaginations, number four. Is that thought, the dream, is that idea holy? Have you ever had imagination, a dream that was, what about it? You know God will judge you for your dreams and your thoughts? Number five. Seventy-five mile per hour sneakers to sin. Off to the fishing hole rather than church. Sunday you're holy. Monday you live like the devil. That's 24 hours. You're quick to do evil, but slow and maybe not even moving to do the Lord's work. Number six is another liar cause. I pledge allegiance to America. What if America turned on your God yesterday, June 26, 2013? I have today written here. What if America said that it's okay for Sodomite to get married and the Bible says it's an abomination? What about if you go and, you know, your word of truth lies in somebody else's balance and you tell a lie? 
Discord among the brethren, number seven, is when you put a division in the church. What about it? I'm going to give you one last verse and we're going to be done. 1 John 1.9 1 John 1.9 If we confess our sins, he, God, is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. Friend, you have talents. No matter what, you have the talent to pray. You have the talent to rejoice, and you have the talent to judge things. And there are things that God is angry. Don't do them. Plain and simple. Thank you.